Hi, this is Yutan. I am Rama Sami Jai Prakash. Dhruv Rati made a video which was titled, Is India Becoming a Dictatorship? This video, given the title, given the nature of the content, it was uh, bound to receive negative comments and a lot of criticisms. And indeed, there was a controversy. People were creating and um, people were commenting a lot of things. And most of these uh, negative comments that the video received were divided into two things. One thing is water watering. Did you ask this government? Did you ask that government? And all that. Any kind of politics you take, water votary will be the norm. So that is fine. That is what happens usually. And that was the kind of response this video also received. And the next aspect of this is, you are a communist stooge. Dhruv Rati is a communist. He is a left liberal. He is this. He is that. He is living in a foreign country with ulterior motives to uh, degrade India and degrade India's image in the international stage. And all those comments were the second aspect of the kind of criticism the, that Dhruv Rati received. And then there is the third one. The third one is the most interesting part. Because the third one stated that Dhruv Rati is making false informations. He is spreading misinformation. What he claims is actually wrong. So that got our interest. So we wanted to see what he said is wrong. Like what aspect he got wrong. In the 10th minute of the video, he is saying that the candidates contesting in Lok Sabha elections can spend up to 95 lakhs and BJP fielded 437 candidates in 2019 Lok Sabha elections. So, if you calculate that, uh, BJP should uh, be spending only 415 crores but they spent more than 1200 crores and this was filed in their uh, affidavit with the election commission itself but election commission did not take any action this is what his claim is this is what uh, he is saying that there is an election malpractice even the election commission is not doing anything about it but as far as this particular uh, spending is concerned the amount of a money a person can spend from his or her own pocket is fixed. The person cannot, a person contesting in uh, elections, be it Lok Sabha elections or uh, legislative assembly elections, cannot spend more than that amount of money. To know how much a candidate has spent, we have to look at the financial statements of that particular candidate and how much he or she spent in that particular election. If that person had spent more than the ceiling limit, that person automatically gets disqualified by the election commission. So this is the norm. But the parties that they belong to, for example, person A belongs to a party called X. The X party can spend how much amount of money it wants to spend. It can choose to spend all the money it has. Um, it is up to their discretion. There is no ceiling limit when it comes to a political party spending its money. The individuals do, but the political parties do not have a ceiling limit. So BJP spending 1200 crores is not a violation of the uh, election commission rules and norms. And Dhruv Rati maybe did not understand it or maybe I don't know what the reason is but he got this point wrong. But apart from this, did he get much of it wrong? The answer is actually no. Every other thing is factually correct. With that, he is making a conclusion. He is making an observation which you can agree or disagree. But the points that he is using is all factually correct. You can call it uh, incomplete or um, insufficient all that is fine all that is a criticism but that is his opinion he is uh, entitled to have his opinion so he is making that opinion but as i said before people in the social media has been claiming that dhruv rati is spreading misinformation and they are uh, there are many kinds of statements and arguments that are being made against dhruv rati's uh, this particular video and one such important person who uh, disagreed with uh, Dhruv Rati's video is Dilip Mandal. Dilip Mandal was one of the people who pointed out that Dhruv Rati got uh, the election spending data wrong. So after pointing this out in Twitter, he goes on to write an article for the print. And when I went through the article, I really thought it was sarcasm. I thought it was satire. But it turns out it was actually true. The guy was being serious. And what did he say? He disagrees with Dhruv Rati and he is disagreeing that India is not becoming a dictatorship. And he is saying that uh, Narendra Modi's uh, BJP government is actually democratic and uh, he gives eight uh, different scenarios, eight different points to prove his claim, to make his case. He is giving eight different arguments. 
The first one is collegium system. BJP and Narendra Modi tried to change the collegium system that we have in the Supreme Court and in the High Courts, but uh, the Supreme Court struck it down with their verdict. After that, uh, BJP government and Narendra Modi did not uh, push for it. So that is an example of Narendra Modi not being a dictator. And second thing is death of formulas. Narendra Modi wanted to bring formulas but uh, the formulas was met with the fierce opposition from the farmers and they were opposing it and immediately after uh, seeing backlash, Narendra Modi took it back. This is the argument that Dilip Mandal makes but it was not done immediately. People had to protest for more than a year and many people died in the protest and after that only it was taken back. And the third argument is when it comes to land acquisition, Narendra Modi government wanted to bring in a new legislation for uh, land acquisitions but several compromises were made and several amendments were uh, not implemented so it uh, became a watered down version of what they intended to give that is also is an example of uh, Narendra Modi not becoming a dictator um, even though CAA is passed it is not implemented so that is the kind of democracy that he has because he is uh, respecting people's sentiments and feelings and UCC Uniform Civil Code Uniform Civil Code is also something that is uh, he is very reluctant and taking very sm uh, slow approach towards it and it is uh, implemented or it is a law uh, has been passed in the Uttarakhand and he is waiting for the kind of response that people are uh, going to give for that and slowly it might come to the rest of the country which is very democratic and he goes on to talk about women's reservation bill which is which has been deferred till 2029 it is not being implemented because there people are not ready there are so many problems in implementing it and uh, we have to build a consensus first and there needs to be a census that needs to be taken and since all this is pending uh, since all this is not done yet uh, he has deferred it for 2029 so that is a sign of not being a dictator and the last part is ram temple before there was a kind of leadership in the bjp that went uh, against uh, the rules and regulations that begin, went against the law that demolished Babri Masjid. Now the Ram Temple is constructed after getting the court order. So Narendra Modi is not a dictator. These are the eight things that he says to make case for uh, Narendra Modi not being a dictator. But are these eight things the yardstick for measuring or ascertaining if a person in power is being a dictator or an authoritarian? Without getting into the actual technical jargons of what constitutes a dictatorship or what constitutes an authoritarian, without going into that, from a layman's perspective, for a common man to understand, let's simplify it and uh, let's break it down. This is how to spot a dictator for dummies. The person will not like any kind of criticism that is being done to their face. That is the first uh, tendency the person will have and the second tendency is the person will not like any kind of criticism that is done behind their back. Even without their knowledge, if somebody is criticizing, that they will not like it. If they come to the knowledge that uh, uh, somebody had criticized them, they will lose their shit and try to get back at them. So this is the second tendency. And the third tendency is they will want all the attention to be focused on them and on them only. They will not share the spotlight with anybody and they will be credit hoggers. All the credit should be only given to them. Anything and everything, even a small thing, a minuscule thing, a non-consequential, insignificant thing, even if that gets done, the credit should be given to this person. That is the kind of tendency an authoritarian or a dictator will have. And the fourth aspect is they will get into a rhetoric which states either you are with me or against me. And the fifth one is a biggie because they will get into a rhetoric of us versus them. What this will do is it will actively divide the people into two separate groups, us versus them. And they will uh, the authoritarian or the dictator will pit uh, one against the other. And he or she will actively rally their supporters to uh, go against the other community or go against the other gang so to speak and this could be based on anything this as well as them can be based on anything it could be based on language it could be based on religion or it could be based on the country or it could be based on anything actually so they'll identify this and they'll go for the kill these are the very simple basic things this is not the foolproof system this is not everything but this will give you some sort of an idea now let me give you some of the recent uh, happenings in the country which are completely idiotic and sometimes even completely you know uncomprehendable 
and these are the kinds of things that did not happen before before 2019 you will not see many crazy incidences that are happening uh, in the past few years for example a simple rti was filed and the question was there are various selfie booths set up uh, with the uh, narendra modi's face in it how much each one costs the response comes the temporary ones cost some several thousand rupees and the permanent ones cost some lakh rupees one and a half lakh rupees something uh, was the response that was given after this rti response there was a backlash and people were asking why are you wasting so much money for a selfie booth in all the railway stations so after the backlash the uh, officer in charge of this rta response he was transferred that is fine i don't condone it but i understand because the next one is far more wild lions were named akbar and sita these were these were the lions in a zoo and they were named akbar and sita and they were put together uh, in the zoo for people got affected by this and vhp went to the court uh they took offense for this and they said how can somebody do this this hurts our, our religious feelings so the person in charge of this particular uh, lions the person was suspended that is a kind of stupidity that we are seeing in the past few days and there are several incidences that happened like this and if i point out each thing one by one the video will run for several hours there is an online trend that says no bindi no business what the trend says is if the uh, model in an ad for a business it could be any business if that model does not have a bindi then we should not do business with that particular brand we should not buy that brand this is a rhetoric and there is another rhetoric this is found everywhere throughout the country anywhere online and offline you can see this that is economic jihad business jihad boycott of muslims many people have been calling for boycott of muslims and muslim shops muslim businesses throughout the country this is not limited to one particular area this does not happen only in the online realm where some crazy people are doing it no this is mainstream this is something uh, that is being said by elected representatives mlas and mps come out and say boycott muslims and people from different religion and different faiths or people from the scheduled caste community are being attacked all the time and it is the numbers has been rising consistently the number of um, uh, the amount of hate speech that we keep seeing has grown exponentially given all this what the government is doing the government is actually doing nothing so that is the problem because when everything is going on the government is actually encouraging it because they don't take any action and apart from taking any action they actively encourage people who uh, get into this sort of things and there are people who get killed for eating beef or are on the mere suspicion of a person consuming beef people are getting killed people are getting killed just because they are muslims they appear muslim we saw a police officer or a railway police officer killing uh three innocent passengers in a moving train he don't know them personally he don't know, he, he has never met them before he just walks through the compartments and he shot them that is the kind of hatred that is being spread and when they themselves are not actively spreading these kinds of hate speeches they are just enabling them that is what uh, the people in the power are doing narendra modi himself said looking at a person's clothing you can identify whether that person is a trouble maker or not whether that person is a criminal or not and amit shah himself told uh, this is an election for uh, between 80 versus 20 80 he meant the hindus 20 the muslims and others so that is the kind of uh, rhetoric that they themselves get into and there is no accountability and the media is not holding them accountable and if the common public if somebody in the media or the common public question the government question narendra modi or the bjp then comes the name calling then comes this uh, tagging them if they are either urban naxals or they are khalistanis or they are this or that separatist um, missionaries or uh, rise back converts everything like anybody and everybody they will find you who no matter who you are if you dare to criticize narendra modi or the bjp you will be called something you will have a tag attached to you in no time so are we a dictatorship today we are not but if we continue down this path if it goes on for some time it could either take 2 years it could either take 5 years or it could take any number of time 
but if we go down this path it is sure that we will become a dictatorship will we become a dictatorship like north korea of course not will we become a dictatorship like russia of course not but that is not a good thing we will become a dictatorship that is a uh, kind of unique in our own way and it is not a compliment it is not something that we should be looking forward to it is something that we should be against and we should put all our efforts and energy into stopping india from becoming a dictatorship thank you